back to episode 16 of the Chantilly podcast and we're back lads for a 16th week this season Newbury's Game Spirit preview show featuring jockey Daryl Jacob who is our special guest on the show and will be coming up for the second half of the show of course Ray Sco Royal in the, the big Game Spirit race at Newbury that is rescheduled for Sunday but we're going to kick off lads with um, Ascot now surname returns to his a track he knows well. Um, Mike Vince will come to you. I know you liked him going into the King George. And I think we did a couple of people question his ratings here early last year. 172 now and obviously completely disappointed. For me, he's incredibly short uh, at, at 8 to 11. The one that interested me in here was Dashiell Drasher. Obviously, he's 1 and 2 on the bounce now. Obviously, stepping up from handicap company. But interesting that they do go here um, over course and distance, it, back in, in integrated company. And I don't think he's without a chance here at, at 11 to 2, considering the way surname ran into King George. And maybe one or two questions, Marks, about his his form in in, in his recent form. Uh, Master Tommy Tucker is never one that I could personally get right, and I don't think anything else um, really uh, comes into the mix here. Um, although Mike can probably tell me riders on the storm wins it. Um, ran well in it last year, of course, Mike. But what what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's not so much of whether he'll win it. I'm looking at a set of odds here that has last year's winner riders on the storm eighteen to one. Uh, which is nonsense. I like Dashiell Drasher if he's got the capability of stepping up. And of course, he's won his last two round Ascot. Really impressive last time, but it's a handicap into grade one. You know, surnames, what what slightly sort of nigg- niggles me about surname is that his best performances have been when he comes into races very, very fresh. I mean, he was awesome at Weatherby. And of course, the, this race two years ago, was his first appearance when he did a complete demolition job on the field. He's far too short for me as well. Master Tommy Tucker will either win by half the track or give Daryl J a complete nightmares. And Dashiell Drasher is not without a chance. But if you're seriously suggesting that Riders on the Storm is, is a complete no-hoper, having won this last year at 18-1, to 1, well, you might be right, because he hasn't actually impressed. He was well beaten by Master Tommy Tucker, and before that, I put the kettle on. So he'd been mixing it with the best. And of course, he fell in the run there behind Min. But his form before that, he'd be on the blind side. And then he beat Janica when, of course, surname fell. I just think, all right, that's only first two places. But I think if you get in about 18 to 1 about that horse each way, it's um, it might be almost irresistible. But a uh, lot of respect for surname and a lot of respect as well. For Dashiell Drasher trained it, of course, he'd be a much shorter prize if he was trained in a higher profile yard than Jeremy Scott's in the middle of Exmoor. Yeah, interesting. This race doesn't lack pace, Ronan Groom. It looks like we have a couple in here that, that may like to be to go aggressively. Master Tommy Tucker, Dashiell Drasher, surname as, as made in the past. Best form has probably been when he's made it. Um, but uh, yeah, Mike seems to like Dashiell Drasher as well. Maybe I've, I've convinced him. He was a horse that I. I, I been following right throughout the season this year and as I said he's gone well up in the weights now obviously for handicaps and interesting that, that he goes in here an aggressive two and a half miles back at Ascot am I going to sell him to you as well? Yeah but you, you did mention it there that there's going to be a bit of uh, competition up front I suppose this time with Master Tommy Tucker there um, I think this is really hard uh, it's, it's it obviously revolves around surname and whether you think that he, he can get back to his best here but um, you know like pulled up never really went to yard again in the King George having looked really good at, at uh, on his comeback at Weatherby he was beaten in this race last year when he was pretty knackered by the last and I mean if he if he's anything close to his best he wins doesn't he because he's this is his course and this is his distance probably but Uh, interesting to see the headgear on as well whether that make a difference it's it's a really hard race to call the master Tommy Tucker is is this is his type of field that he I, I think anyway he needs um, like a, a like a small field but that I guess is negated with the, the dash or drasher up front I'm not sure will that annoy him or will that affect his jumping um, I don't think there's much between Benny's King and Dashiell Drasher on their running there the last day and, and Benny's King I can see here is nearly twice the price so that that was the one part of the market that I didn't really half kind of agree with but it's it's not a race that I really want to get involved with I do have some 
bets that I'm going to have this weekend. Uh, it's not that I'm kind of dodging the first two races, but um, I just thought this was difficult to, with surname taking up 60% of the market. Um, but you just, I'm just not sure you could really trust him um, after his last run and his run this race last season. So it's uh, I'll have to take another watch and brief here. Ronald Groom, that mic is sounding well. The first microphone on the Champ that podcast. We're moving yeah, 23, 23.99 in Tesco. <laughs> moving up in the world. We're going to have to get one for Thomas Kyle soon uh, in Batterstown County Mead. Thomas. Don't forget the club card points. What's that? <laughs> what did you say? Mike, Mike Vince is complaining to the stewards again, I think, after the April. No, I just said to him, don't forget the club card points. Think what you can <laughs> do with them. <laughs> Uh, Thomas, you were critical of surnames rating last year. He's still rated 172. Can't be right, can it? Yeah, look, he he, he can be either electrifying or he's very disappointing. He's one of them horses. And for me at this price, I couldn't be having any of them. Um, Master Tommy Tucker was electrifying the last day. Um, bar, I don't know, Harry Cobden went absolutely AWOL at the last. If that was my jockey, he'd have been picking stones around the gallop for the next week for doing something like that when he had the race won and giving him a kick down to the last. Um, yeah, the, the Dasha Rasher, uh, he definitely has his chance. Um, I don't see Dan Skelton getting a freebie in this one with Benny's King anyway. Um, and Riders on the Storm, if he came back, he'd have a chance. But um, yeah, it's not it's not a race to be diving into. Um, if you were to put me to one, I probably would take a chance on Master Tommy Tucker after being so impressed with the last day. Um, he might take a bit of catching from the front end, um, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what surname turns up. So, we only have two selections there, got in the hole. I'm strong on Dash and Drasher. I, I'd like to take the first two on in the market, and I think he's he's progressive. And uh, we're going to come on to Wing Canton, lads 318. Uh, it's the Kingwell Hurdle Grade 2. There's so much action packed in this weekend. Mike, I think last, last year, Wing Canton was on the following weekend. You might correct me. I don't know if it's a, is it far from Ascot to Wing Canton, but we're going down here for a, a pretty tasty clash. It must be said, song for someone, 5-4 to four for Tom Simmons, Aidan Coleman on board. Goshen, Jamie Moore comes back in here after bombing out last time, similar to surname at, uh, at Cheltenham. He's 5-2. to two. Navajo Pass was mighty impressive. And uh, yeah, for, for, for Donald McCain and Brian Hughes come down here, make the trip down from the north, 10 to 3. Friend or foe, 10 to 1. Esprit de large, back over hurdles, 12 to 1. And Calgary Tiger um, is a 500 to 1 chance, Mike Vince. What's your thoughts on this one? Song for someone. Um, uh, let me say one thing. Wynn Canton has had a lot of rain and it will be a bog. It will be really testing. Um, it's eye-wateringly wet and of course it's quite high up and so I'm looking at Song for Someone for one reason only that not only is he proven over two miles he's proven over further than two miles um, Goshen has I think to do the, the you know the the excuses department will will probably empty if Goshen gets beat again Evan Williams interesting decision to bring the horse back over hurdles um, as bearing in mind, of course, he's already got Silver Streak, who will, will be a leading player at Cheltenham. Um, but I'm with the favourite here. Thomas Kyle, Goshen. I'm not too sure you were a fan at the start of the season. Um, I think you were commenting on Hector Crouch's ride, and he didn't spare him uh, on the flat when he raced early this season. Only had the two runs over hurdles and has to turn around a 29 length. Um, has turned around that would song for someone. So it's the only thing I would say about Goshen is I suppose his for, his his almost his best run he had came on on heavy ground. Um, so it's I think he will handle yeah, look, the conditions if he comes back to anything like his best. Yeah, look for for the horse's sake, we all hope he comes back and gets back into the picture. But just for me, he's going to have to win. As I said, I think the last day when he ran, he's going to have to win one of these races to put himself back in the limelight again. And until he does that, he's definitely just a watch and brief for me for a while. Um, yeah, look, for, for Tom Simmons, you'd love to see um song for someone going on and winning here and, and being a real live candidate again in the champion hurdle. Um, he done it well with Silver Street the last day. Um, Navajo Pass, you can't take Anton away from that run the last day when you bet um, over there. Probably looking at it, maybe Nico was 
second half, mine and Bouvet there in his first run back and, and um, Navajo passed, maybe just got a run on him and um, they couldn't couldn't reel him back. But um look, it's 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 a tricky little contest again. Um the fact that Mike has said it's gonna be very heavy and some for someone does stay a little bit further, you'd imagine that could could just play to his advantage in this and he might take a bit of pegging. Would you be forgiven with, with Gorshin? As I said, we, we, we've mentioned his form already this season, but he's, I mean, looking at the weights here, if you were to say that you'd be, you'd be rocking up a month from the champion hurdle and, and, and six pounds Gorshin was, was getting in, in, in receipts from, from Song for someone and he was a five to two chance. Would you be willing to take that on away, take the chance? Uh, no, not really, Barry. No, I um. Uh, he's got to he's got to win, hasn't he? Goshen, uh, he's got to do it now. I think if if you if you have any sort of aspirations, if you've backed him for a champion hurdle, you know this is it's now or never, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's just like even if you if you think that he is back to his best, it's just not the ideal season with the the fibular aging heart problem, and you know that clearly wasn't his running. But you know he hasn't given his running in a while now. When you take in the flat uh, kind of runs as well, so. Um, yeah, song for someone, Barry. I, I backed for the champion hurdle, and I was a bit worried just with the whole the way the season's gone for him since 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 he won at Cheltenham because they obviously wanted to get a run into him a couple of times, but the, it's got rained off, and now we're into you know less than less than a month or so from the festival, and it's it's heavy ground, and I, I just hope he doesn't have a, a bad race, but. I, I just really like the horse. I think he's underage. He's he's seven wins from thirteen starts. He's only been out of the frame once in his life. He's won his last three. He's a six year old. He's really progressing. Everyone wanted to talk about Silver Streak after that international hurdle. They said that he didn't get a run and the race was slowly run and they didn't suit him. But song for someone uh, I thought was one of the more inconvenienced by the fact that he only jumped four hurdles. He's a really good jumper, and uh, I thought he was just as much to take out of that race. Uh, as um, Silver Streak was, and Silver Streak went on and won the uh, Christmas hurdle, be Nepotant, um, and is a much shorter price than Song for Someone for the Champion Hurdle. I just think he is uh, the springer there in the Champion Hurdle market. I hope he has a, you know, doesn't empty himself out here and leave his race on heavy ground. That'd be a bit of a disaster. But um, he's the one I'd be watching closely. I'm Navajo Pass. I'm not sure. I mean, uh, Tom is saying you can't take anything away from. Him. I just think. I don't think think Bouverdere was near his best there, and and I don't think Nico tried very hard at all. And um, Baliandi didn't run his race, so I'd be just a bit questionable about that form. I'm, I'm not sure he'll get any sort of uh, freebie in front here either. Uh, friend or foe is is one I was kind of half interested in for the Betfair hurdle. Obviously, he runs here instead. I thought he did it nicely the last day when he was second to a horse, giving loads of weight away. So I wouldn't rule out a big run for him, but I'll all eyes and song for someone here with regards to the champion hurdle. Yeah, interesting. There'll be plenty of pace on in this as well. Probably just gosh, I might just a small little bit more fate uh, than the rest of the lads here. I just think at, at the price is getting that weight. Um, as Ronan said, it is now or never. And if you take into account how 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 highly he was regarded at the back end of last year, season at the start of this year, as I said, he's only had one run over hurdles so far this year. And take a chance. Um, it is a chance, but but five to two gosh, and just seems. Seems maybe too big against the rest of them here. Coming on, Mike, Mike, we're not going to cover Haydock, but you said you wanted to mention one. Yeah, I just think that uh, there may well be one that's been laid out here uh, in the Potems because it's a horse that I actually think might go quite close in the Potems if it goes all the way. Trevor Hemmings loves it in Farron's way. Charlie Deutsch is going there to ride. Um, it's a race where the Grand National Trials the key race. We've got our main fact trying to win the Rendlesham. Um, but a very good handicap at 350 and uh, Farrant's way in the Trevor Hemmings colours might well be uh, one we'll be hearing more about in the weeks that lie ahead. Mullins, Spyglass Hill for Henry de Bramad, who has a cracking record in this race in recent years. I think he took three of the last five, correct me now if I'm wrong. Sal Saretta also in here for Danny and Willie. Uh, we'll talk about this one first. Roland Tots. Yeah, this is this is a nice little race, Barry, without being like top class. But uh, I, 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 um, I had a bit of a sneaky feeling for Castle Grace Paddy. Um, I think he's quite interesting coming up the trip. Uh, I um had Pat Fatty for the big interview for the Irish Field last week, and uh, he was just saying that that's they're going to try that with him. He's he's kind of you know he's not making an impact at two miles 
at grade one and grade two level. So why not go up a trip? And it's interesting you go back. He, he was a point to point winner, or finished second as point to point. And on the second run, he was he went over two and a half miles at Ferry House in a maiden hurdle, and Alvin Photo was directly behind him in third. Uh, he finished second that day, but all of his career has basically spent over uh, shorter distances. But I think he's interesting coming up and trip. And if he does stay the extra distance um, and maybe even improve for it, he, he probably could take all the beating here. When you take into account Animix bombed terribly last time and obviously has been a bit difficult to train throughout his career. He's been high profile from a, from a young age, but it's never really um, delivered as such. And maybe that's a physical thing, but he was disappointed the last day after running okay in front of Casper Race Paddy at the end of the Christmas. And Annabelle Fly, just give him a quick mention, because he was second in this race before Barry, and I actually, when the weights came out for the National during the week, I, he, he was the one that was uh, kind of popped out to me. He was given a weight of 150, rating of 155 for the National. That puts him underneath 11 stone. And when you, when you consider the races he's run at Aintree, he's been fifth and he's been fourth in the race. To have, if he came back to any sort of his best form, you know, he was second in the, he was placed in two gold cups, He'd be really well well handicapped for a national if he ran well here and see what they do with him then. But it, I'll be I'll be watching him and see see how he goes. But Castle Grace Paddy was the one that interested me most for uh, win purposes. Yeah, Tom Ronan, I, I I tend to agree. I think he has the best form arguably this season. He's better at Plutard, of course, at Navan on, on soft and heavy uh, ground. That was obviously in his first start, and this this seems to be the plan. Obviously, the brought him to England, as you said, and. He's been off now for the guts of, you know, nearly two months now at this stage. So this seems to have been the plan for Castle Grace Party. As you said, back up and trip is interesting. The other one to mention, Thomas, and I'll ask you, Sal Saretta, she completely disappointed last time. She had some good chase form last season, but uh, she was one I, I, I liked, um, I suppose, the profile. And even people were speaking about her as potentially being a mayor's chase horse for this year. So very interesting to see how she runs uh, but Castle Grace Paddy takes a lot of boxes for me. What's your thoughts? Yeah, um, Castle Grace Paddy probably has the best form in, in, in this race and he's been at the top table as in the Tingle Creek and the champion chase at Christmas there in Leperstown as well. Um, yeah, look, Ronan said everything about him um, and I think the step up and trip might probably help him to get eat that little bit of improvement out. Probably won't take a whole lot of win in this. Um, as you said, Salsaretta, she's interesting. She's getting her mare's allowance off him as well. And um, if you go back to her form where she beat Galvin um, oh, in Punchestown, like if she comes back to something like that, she'll definitely give him something to to think about um, with the seven pounds she's getting off him. Um, Henry's Henry's horses are, are, are in good form as well, as we've seen Honeysuckle and all that. Um, so he can't be left out. Probably is a little bit defined on ratings with them. Um, Animix has to do something from where he got annihilated the last day. He has to show a bit better. But I'm um, kind of hoping Castle Grace Paddy, he's, he's a good, honest horse. And um, for, for Pafa, he, he, he's a horse that can go places and... Uh, I hope he does go out and wins this and uh, and look forward to maybe getting a, a bit more distance into his racing and um, he can be interesting going forward after this. Absolutely. Now, before we come on to Newbury, Dar Jacob was our special guest on the show. Now, obviously, we mentioned he rides master Tommy Tucker, but has, has a, a lovely ride, of course, in the game spirit uh, at Newbury, which is rescheduled for this Sunday. So let's hear from Daryl and we'll come on and preview Newbury. So delighted to have Daryl Jacob come on board the Champ that E podcast for episode number 16 of the season. And it's an exciting time of year, Daryl. Cheltenham obviously just just around the corner, just four weeks now from, from yesterday as we're recording. Uh, your season has been going well, Daryl, with over 40 winners again so far. Yeah, good evening, man. Good evening, Peter. Um, yeah, look, we've had, a, we've had a lovely season so far. Um, obviously, the last sort of a month or so has been a little bit stop start with the weather and the way the ground and, and everything. Um, but, you know, up until that, the horses have been running very, very well. Um, their trials before Christmas and the big meetings were more good and, and the Christmas period was good as well. So, you know, we're very much looking forward to, uh, you know, hopefully getting a little bit better ground in the next couple of weeks and um, get some of these horses out, you know, whether they're going to go to Cheltenham or whether they're going to go to Aintree, but they need to, they need to get out and about and, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to a good, uh, good end of season, really, with a, with a lot of, um, you know, really, really nice horses to look forward to. Absolutely, and last weekend was probably a little bit more relaxing than usual. We have a backlogger race, and of course, this weekend, Daryl, 
Uh, looking forward to this weekend in particular to score Royal for yourself, who and he's entered in Sunday's rescheduled game spirit. I see. How's he been since? Because he took a fall at Kempton. How's he been? Yeah, look, he's in really good form. Um, look, Kempton was just, was just unfortunate, really. Nothing really went according to plan, really. Uh, lots of going down to start. He's a little bit unsettled. Um, before the race and um, and during the race he just quite hasn't quite got the zest that he, he usually has but he had a lot of quick runs up before that so um, you know Alan's done a great job with him this year so far he's won an awful lot of fights on he's won some wonderful races and uh, you know he's been freshened up really nicely and uh, you know we're very much looking forward to, to, to Sunday with him we're just hoping that we don't get too much rain there's a lot of rain over in, in England here and around Newbridge tonight and tomorrow we're just Hoping if we can miss a lot of that, we can we can get to Newbury with nice, good to stop ground, and you know that's when he's at his best, really. Yeah, and such a consistent type, Darren. I mean, I recorded, I think you've owned him 11 times in, in, in over 35 career starts uh, that he's had on the track, and you, as I said, you've been on board all, for 11 of those wins, and he must hold such a big place in your heart, a horse that goes and wins 11 times in 35 starts. Yeah, he, he's been a wonderful horse for me in my career, and also for Simon and I think as well. Um, you know, he's uh, he's not a very big horse, but he's got a massive heart. And he's like a little terrier for you. He'll, he'll fight for you all day long. So, you know, and they're the type of horses that you want, um, you know, that really fight for you and try for you. And uh, like I say, it's, uh, I'm sure it's, it's his cousin that's one of a lot of them races. And he's had a lot of tough battles um, throughout his career. Uh, but he, he still wants to keep giving you more and more every time he runs. Yeah, and he's rated 157 over hurdles and just six pound higher over fences. Obviously, ran a cracker back in 20, 2019 in, in in the Champion Chase. But he started off this season with two wins over hurdles. Like, what, what, was was there a plan always to go back over fences this season? Um, no, because it, it was it was it was look, it was well spotted by. Um, by our racing manager Anthony Bromley. Um, the horse had a he had a he had a wing surgery at the start of the year, and uh, you know this race was, it came up as the world champion hurdle. It came up um, on nice ground, and we knew there was a horse going for called Bally Andy. We knew he was going for it, so we knew we wouldn't have top weight because a lot of the time, you know, a handicap he'd have top weight, he'd have to give away um, a lot of weight to other horses. So you know, in this particular race, it was a case of we didn't have top weight. And we were getting way away, we kept a few of the horses out with a handicap and, and we thought it was a good opportunity on good on, the, on nice ground, you know, to get him out and about and sure. you know, he won it impressive he won it impressively and uh, and then he went on to the um to win Canton and he won that great two order there as well. So um you know, I just think it was very, very well faced by, by Anthony Bromley and, and Alan King. Yeah, and looking I suppose ahead to this weekend, I mean he's only three pounds rated inferior to to Champ, and you know he, he's he's receiving weight off both Champ and Grenatine in here. So, how would you fancy his chances? He, he surely surely looks well in at the weights anyway. Oh, I, I think he's got a massive chance to weekend. But as long as, like you say, as long as his brain stays away, um, that's the most important thing. Because cracking ground is uh, is key to this horse. Um, look, at Champ coming back from. From an RSA trip at Cheltenham, went in the RSA, and he looked like as if he needed every yard of that trip um, at Cheltenham last year when he when he um, when he won. He literally got up in the last ten yards, didn't he? So he looked like as if he needed every yard of that trip um, at Cheltenham last year. I know that he's worried about you know not giving him too hard of a race. He hasn't run since then, and he didn't want to go in the in the Denman chase and then and maybe leave him tired so he could come back a few miles. But he's not a slow horse. I've, Obviously, with Nicky Anderson, I see him a lot. Um, and Nicky Anderson, he's, he's not a slow horse by any means. But, you know, I would like to think that God's story else could have a little bit more toe than him at the, at the at the back of the second last or at the back of the last. And, and Grenatine's done nothing wrong. He's been a good, consistent, solid horse before Nick was just in handicaps and he's walked his way up to this sort of grade. So, um, but I think, you know, looking looking at the at the bare forms that we, you know, we have, got, I suppose, We've got the proven horse, we've got the class horse in the race that, that's been there, done it at the top level for, for many, many years. 
Newbury. Well, let's stick with Newbury, Daryl, because uh, you're on board Shaken Up Harry, um, who has had plenty of experience, seven runs over hurdles, and obviously ran the novice race last time against Metier. But how do you assess his chances in the, in the big handicap at Newbury, the bet for a hurdle? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure whether I ride it yet um, at the moment, because um, Fred runs, possibly Fred, one of our and I'd be and obviously I'm retained by them so um, I'll potentially be riding in the key run but look at Shake up Harry he, he, he's done he's, he's done well enough this year I mean he was the second season novice um, you know uh, he, he started out life this year on more than 26 and he's gone up he's won a novice at cost last he's gone up to, to 136 to 138 something like that you know, running, you know, running nicely and, and handicap, etc., etc. Um, he's got an awful lot, you know, to, to win a race like this. He's still got to improve. I think, in, you know, he's got to improve another eight or nine pounds to really get involved in this. But he, you know, every bit of rain that they get at Newbury will help his chances. He's a real soft ground type of horse. So, you know, if, if you're looking, you know, if you want trying ground for score, yeah, and you want plenty of rain for this lad. So, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one way or another, you know. So, um, but look, he, Look, he, he, whatever happens, even if it is with the stock or whatever the ground is, I'm sure he'll run very, very well. Um, he probably, you know, he's in time to run two and a half for the moment. Two miles, not a bad trip from at the moment. Brilliant. And, and Gypsy, we, we mentioned Metier. And a horse that finished third, I think, to Metier on his on his English debut was a horse I wanted to ask you about, Daryl, was Gypsy the Chazil, if I'm after pronouncing that well. I see he's entered up this weekend in, 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 in two places. Do you like him? Yeah, we do, yeah. He's, he's a lovely horse. Um, he's going to be a next year's horse rather than this year's horse. Um, he's still got a bit of filling out to do. He's still got a bit of growing up to do. But it was a lovely run behind Metier. Um, that first not run at Ascot, we need to find out a little bit about him. You know, we learned an awful lot about him that day. And uh, and like you say, he's he horse really for next year rather than this year. Um, I'm not sure he'll take up any of his targets this, this weekend or not. We might just, there is a couple of races in the next couple of weeks that we might target with him. They're, they look quite tasty races for him. So, but he's definitely a horse to pull up for the future for sure. Brilliant. If the cap fits, has obviously entered in the Reynolds Town at Ascot. Um, were you disappointed he was beaten at Taunton over an extended three miles and four furlongs? Would it would it would a step back down to three miles suit? No, I he wasn't no, he wasn't disappointing um at all. Uh to be he, he he ran a nice race. The Alanki obviously obviously won the race. The Alanki finished third in the Welsh National three weeks before. The Alanki was a very, very good horse. Um you know, the Alanki ran it against Native River, Bristol and May and all them type of horses. Um, a couple of weeks ago around Sandown, um, and he put it up to him until, until sort of two out. So we know Yala Enki's a very, very good horse. Um, you know, and then the track wouldn't have suited um, if he can't fit either. It was a sharp track, and it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have played to his strength at all. So, no, he ran he ran a, a, a real solid race. He was there, bang upside Yala Enki at the last. Um, and, and I suppose Yala Enki is, is a, you know, it's a season pro, whereas well, our lad is still an office yeah. up there. We know we've got more to we've got more to come from him. And he obviously ran at Cheltenham last year. Would that be in the back of your minds for him? Yeah, he's going to go straight to Cheltenham. Yeah, he's up to this weekend to the Grand Prix before the last cut. So he's going to go straight to Cheltenham. Brilliant. And speaking of Cheltenham, uh, we must come on to just a couple more of the, the Manier and, and, and Suede team horses. Concertista, obviously, there was a fantastic uh, victory last year at Cheltenham. Um, in in the mayor's novice, she obviously heads the market now for the mayor's for the mayor's hurdle. Um, I see she is entered this weekend. I'm not sure if you can tell us about plans for that, but she must be really exciting you. Yeah, look, she's a very good filly, um, very good mare actually. Um, you know, she won very very well with me last year at the Dublin Festival, and um, you know, she really showed a, a lot of toe. You know, from the back of the last of the way, when the other horses were getting tired, um, you know, she come out and she's. She's won one, two races this year, very, very solid form. Um, she seems to be getting better and better. Um, she is in this weekend at Gorn. Um, not 100% sure whether she's going to take up that engagement with the ground being so heavy. She could end up going straight to Cheltenham. Um, obviously, we'll, we'll find out a little bit more in due course. So, but look, she's a wonderful filly, a wonderful mare, and, uh, and a very exciting one. Wish you the best of luck with her at, at Cheltenham, Daryl. 
Please God she gets there fit and well. Blue Lord obviously sticking with, with Willie Mullins ran, ran a cracker um, on his last two starts and obviously stepped back to, to two miles. Would have the option probably of boat races at Cheltenham, but he must be exciting you also. Oh, he's a good horse. He's, again, he's more of a next year horse than this year. Um, you know, what he's done is, is, is wonderful. He's been in grade one races and, uh, you know, he's, He's improved with every run and um, seems to be getting better and better. And uh, look, if he's, uh, he's an exciting horse to, to, to go to war with, him. and especially next year when he's got another season under his belt, and uh, I think there's some nice targets to be cut between, between now and the end of the year with him. But you know, I'm sure you'll see him in the winner's disposal. Thank you. Monte Cristo, a word for him. Is he on course? Monte Cristo, yeah, he, he's done well. He picked up an injury after I won on him in Kempton around Christmas time. Um, so he hasn't been out since the action them last weekend. He seems in really good form. He's coming back to himself. I didn't imagine he would go straight to Chelsea for one of the handicap matches now off his, off his new handicap, off his revised handicap. But look, he's an, he's an exciting horse. Took him a little bit of time to, uh, to fill out and get used to the English way of racing. And, and just, he was always a big, tall, lean horse. But um, he's starting to fill out now. He's done a wonderful job with him in the He's starting to fill out and get bigger and stronger. And he just, I think he just needed that bit of time. Like every week, he came over in France a couple of years ago. And uh, I hope they were much seeing the benefits of it now. Brilliant, Darren. I'm going to take a question from Twitter quickly. Simon Curry has said, it's a shame we won't see Bristol de Maya at Cheltenham. It's understandable. However, the Grand National weights are out. So how would you assess his chances? Weight given track, uh, national fences, the trip, ground, etc.? Uh, yeah, he, look, I'm, some people might be a little bit disappointed not to see him at Cheltenham, but I'm, I'm, me personally, I'm delighted because um, he's a horse that's very, very good, fresh, um, as you can, as his record shows, like winning three best fair chances. He's a very, very good horse, fresh. He's lovely, fresh, and uh, and exuberant. And uh, I don't think he can go, well, especially this horse. I don't think he can run him in a Gold Cup and then two and a half weeks there try and win uh, try and win a Grand National with him um, it's one or the other um, we've been down to the, the, the Gold Cup route uh, a few times and you know he's finished third in it one year but he, in theory he's just not quite good enough he doesn't he doesn't really stay up that hill at the end of a true run Gold Cup so you know we're going back to a, 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 a sort of a, a tactic that worked well with him and then a flat left hand track we know that's his, uh, his, his best uh, performance I've been on flat left hand track an entry over the big fences, I think it's going to play to his strength. And, uh, the handicapper has given him two pounds off his official handicap mark, which obviously his health. He's going to have pathway. But look at it. You know, because we're going to have a back at the, at the Grand National this year, it's going to be his year. And uh, look at I'm, I'm, re- I'm really excited about Ryder. Um, I think he's been crying out for, for these fences for a couple of years now. And I think this year is the perfect year to try it. But let's crack on with Newbury. Three o'clock, as I said, it's, it's rescheduled. Grenatine, six to four in here for the game spurt at three o'clock on Sunday. Champ, ten to three. Well named, of course, Mike Vince. Score Isle for Daryl Jacob, ten to three also. Dallas, six to one. Fanny and Destraval, eight to one. Magic Saint, eight to one. Riders on the Storm has also entered up in here. Um, where do we start with this? Thomas Coyle, you were not a fan of Grenatine early in the season. He's ran some nice races without, I suppose, really making the breakthrough. Uh, I suppose in great in great a company, uh, won won the Holden Gold Cup and and just missed out next time behind Politologue. Uh, but uh, he's a horse in here. He heads the market. Like for me, potentially he could be better going up in trip as the season goes on. I was maybe looking at him potentially. Maybe would he would would Nichols maybe run him in the Ryanair? And if he if he did run there, he'd be interesting. Champ comes right back down in trip, but the one here who's I suppose at the weights, um he looks to be, be well set up in here. That's Score Isle. And we spoke to Darren Jacob. He was the one that I liked for this. And um uh, look, I suppose early form over hurdles this season. It's come back over fences, but just at the weights um, you know, he gets six pounds off grenatine in here. He's rated two pounds better, but Jay's ten to three. For me, that makes no sense. Yeah, no, um, I, I definitely agree with you in that. Um, you got grenatine spot on earlier on in the year, which is not something we like saying around here, but we have to give you credit um, for when he won an Exeter. Um, 
I don't know, was he just betting on the last day? Pelilog kind of betting with seven lengths and putting well in his place. But Pelilog is a good good yardstick, obviously, in, in this grade. Um, look, Champ, Champ is interesting, but you'd imagine um, looking at horses like Boover there and, and, and horses like that coming back, that he's probably going to need a run. And they have, obviously, Cheltenham in mind. So he's not going to be getting the hardest of races if he, if he can win he, of course he can win but um, you can't imagine them um, Nico flogging him um, for his first run back for nearly a year um, yeah look as you say um, on ratings uh, Sco Royal has to at the prices as well you'd imagine he he um, he probably looks the better the race there um, just um, Venetia Williams horse is probably interesting We I think we've we've talked about him a good bit on this uh on the podcast and um, there might be a, a race like this somewhere down the line. I don't think maybe this is the one for him, but um, he, he's also interesting to keep, keep an, keep an eye on for the future. But um, yeah, look, probably Sco Royal for me as well um, at the price and at the weights. I'm probably going to agree with you on this one, Barry. Yeah. But Mike, I'm going to bring you in on champ because Look, he hasn't he hasn't run in open company yet he, over fences. He's had obviously won the right the RSA last year and looked like he needed four mile, not three mile. Comes right back down and trip. Now he's renowned to be, I suppose, a keen going sort. Obviously, he has a huge engine. He's had the wind up, but uh, I just I can't understand why he's going back to two miles here. What about you? Yes, sir. Um, uh, but my one burning question about I looked at this race and obviously I'm talking before the final decks are confirmed but if what lines up is what we think is going to line up is Champ going to try and make all? What's going to happen? There's no obvious tear away in there. It's like you know when, you, when we go to the bar after this programme you always come back Rowan and Groom to be in front early doors um, <laughs> but I can't I, I'm trying to work this out and and it, the day I go against Fanny and Destreval is the day he'll finally come back to form because, of course, he was absolutely spectacular on his first race for Venetia at, at, at Newbury, was it last year? Um, yeah, I'm speaking to you now as baffled here. I really am. It's a baffling race. Uh, I don't know how it's going to develop tactically. I think Green and Tin is probably the best bet in this. I really do because Champ clearly is... Um, here uh, in a view to getting a horse to the festival and nothing else. He needs to run before the festival. Quite why they've avoided taking on Clandes or Bo, I don't know. Um, but trying to, if you could read in the mind of NJ Henderson, he'd be a rich man. Unfortunately, I'm not. And it looks as though from the way they've turned out tonight, you aren't and neither is Tommy. Is it his case of sharpen up his jumping or obviously get that run into him? But he could have went for the dead man run and run. I just... <laughs> For me, Score Isle just sticks out like a sore thumb here. Two votes now for Score Isle, one for Grant. If he jumps yeah. round, that's his problem because he what he what he hit he hit one badly at Kempton. But he hit about the third he hit the third fence at the top, and then he fell two later. Um, I don't know whether I'd fancy him as a safer conveyance than the mother-in-law. <laughs> Ran well over hurdles this year, to be fair to him. So he, he's obviously in good enough nick. And speaking to Darren, he obviously has thought he's come out of fall. Uh, well enough, but we, as we probably won't know obviously until he runs what are the effects of that fall. Ronan Groom thoughts? Yeah, look, um, I can It's kind of half and said, or but I don't know. Look, I think it's bizarre. Champ runs here, I really do. And I know I've had it in for Nicky a couple of times this season, but yeah, and, and Nicky Especially Henderson Nicky was the best of mates, Ronan Groom. That's for sure. Well, I wouldn't say that. I would always have a lot of time to listen to him, but this season, just a couple of things have been. Uh, I just find him mad, and I'm, don't get me wrong. Nicky Henderson will forget more about racing than I know. But running champ back over two miles here, you know, when you take into account what the ultimate goal is, the Gold Cup, running him back over two miles here, he's probably going to run faster than he ever has in his life. You're talking about a horse who had, you know, big questions about his jumping last season. You know, if he falls, that's a disaster. Um, to go into the Gold Cup. Going like like it's, I just don't think it's great preparation for a Gold Cup when you are running over two miles and then like what what if he starts running free at Cheltenham you, you'll never get home having you know having gone back to two miles maybe they just pop him around and that's it it's basically a, a, a race course gallop I don't know but I, I wouldn't be getting involved with him at hundred to thirty or whatever um yeah I, I actually did like one here Barry and that was uh, 
Fanny and Dexter Val, and you now we've we've talked them up a bit on this podcast before. But I thought you ran really well at Ascot. Uh, he was fourth there to uh, first flow and uh, ran ran well for most of the way. And I think the move to this track, this is where he was quite impressive on his uh, on his uh, first run for Venetia Williams. And he hacked up here um, over this course and distance. And uh, I just think he's been steadily improving with each one of his runs. He gets six pounds off Grenatine. I think that's significant. And for all the Grenatine is a uh, kind of improving chaser himself, but thought he was fairly put in his place by Politolog last time in the in the Tingle Creek. And Politolog was obviously well beaten in that Ascot race that Fanny and Destreval was in as well. So I don't think there's much between those two horses at all. They can see your case with So Royal. Um, the fall would quite worry me back over fences. He's done most of his winning over hurdles this season. Um, I just thought eight to one about Fanny and Destreval was quite big actually. So uh, I've, I've, I've backed him. Bet for a hurdle, 3.35. Bet of the weekend in here for me, lads. I've been just waiting for this horse. Back to him at 16 to 1 for this race. He's in here number 20. Well down the field, or well down the weights here, off 133. Soaring glory. I'll give you a quick show of betting, though, first of all. 9 to 2, Cadzand uh, for the Skeletons. Uh, 11 to 2, that's soaring glory. Uh, Buzz, 10 to 1 for Nicky Henderson. Edward Stone, 10 to 1 for Alan King. Mr. Coffee, 10 to 1. Annual Invictus, 12 to 1. 12 to 1, 50 ball. Milkwood, 12 to 1. On the victory, 12 to 1. Sky Pirate, 12 to 1. 14 to 1, Guard Your Dreams. 14 to 1, Shake Em Up Harry. 14 to 1, Time White. And it is for pleasure, 16 to 1. Now, we don't, I could go on for a little longer there. We don't obviously have full decks, but it looks like, as I said, Soaring Glory, it looks like we'll go for the race. Um, as, as I've been crying out, 133. You know, he beat Brave Man's game on his first start of the season, obviously over, over a shorter distance than what Brave Man's game had been winning over, winning over. was just beaten by, by Dusart. But he's, he's had, I suppose, a couple of runs now over hurdles. 133 in here will handle the conditions. And uh, I just think he's, he's off an incredibly low weight here. Probably deserves the weight, to be fair. I just think he's well handicapped. Uh, Mike Vince, had you thoughts on this big one? You love that. I suppose a big juicy handicap on a Saturday in England. This one, of course, is on Sunday. Um, I regret to say, and it's against my contracts and my beliefs and everything else uh, about me, that I agree with you. <laughs> um, from the day be and it, and it is that line of form against Brave Man's Game. Um, I will put a couple up at big prices, but I agree with you. I think he's he's been set up for the race. Um, I think it's quite significant. Um, one, I, I, I want to mention a jockey booking as much as anything else. I always thought Gumball would go well over fences. He's back over hurdles in this. Of course, carrying the rooster booster colours who won it. But um, Philip Hobbs is putting Ben Jones up and Richard Johnson rides um, annual Invictus, who's won two egg and spoons at Plumpton. And you never quite know how good the Plumpton form actually is. And also the Moors have got a good record in this race and they have got a horse called 50 Ball in it. Um, I think, are we assuming this? And, this, and the other question, we talk about the John Joe O'Neill's, and unfortunately we just don't know, is Sky Pirate going to turn up? But like you, I'm a big Soaring Glory fan, um, but I would suggest possibly 50 ball each way for the Moors might be worth, worth keeping an eye on, or maybe mm. not. No, interesting, because I, I thought Soaring Glory, to be fair, was going to make up into potentially a supreme novice's hurdle horse, and he may still do, if it depends on obviously what he does here, but I don't know, I just think 133 is one of the best handicapped horses they've seen in a while. Thomas Kyle? Yeah, you, you flagged him up, I think, at the start of the year as well, didn't you, from his bumper form coming into this year? So, yeah, look, he, he probably does look well. Um, He does well look well handicapped at the minute, but... Uh, you have to try and find something to beat you. I've landed down on Wild Max of um, Paul Paul Nichols. Um, he probably won too impressive the last day, to be honest. He got thirteen pounds for a nine nine length victory, and um, to, I think it's Angus Chilida is um, Paul Nichols' uh, conditional rider that rode him that day. Um, he rides him again, so he takes seven off eleven seven, leaves him at eleven stone. He um the time before he won in Huntington and um, Harry Cobden won 
Benham and Eber Horse of Donald McCain's called Const- Constitio. Uh, he ran well again the next day. So look, he 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 came with a high enough rating from I think he came from Germany um, with ninety. Um, he's won four of his six hurdles in England. Um, so look, he, he he could be there with a chance. The other the other one going on jockey bookings. It's interesting that Harry Cobden rides um, the other horse. Time Time White is it? Mm. Um, he rides him. He he was in contention the last day with Floressa. I think we put up the pink and in that one he was second. Um, he unseated at the second last. He was niggled alone, but he still had his chance. So um, it's interesting that uh, Harry goes for him. So. I'd, I'd be looking at the two um, Nichols horses at each way prices maybe to take you on. Yeah, one horse we haven't mentioned yet, uh, Ronan Groom. We'll have to mention a few there, but uh, he'd be my second choice in the race if it was to go to. And again, he's, he's up near up, up, up near the, I suppose the, the front of the betting. But Mr. Coffey, um, was it was listen, he, he was impressive on the, on his first start this season um, at Sandown and was beaten by Mike Vince's Benson. Um, like that was one of your better moments on the Chant of the e podcast. But I think it was, he's obviously a very free going sort of to get him to switch off. It's obviously going to be a much bigger field in here, but 138 now for him as well. I know Nicky has uh, buzz in here as well, but of the two, obviously soaring glory, the obvious, but, but Mr. Coffey would be my, my second, second selection for the race. What about yourself? Yeah, just give a quick mention as well while we're at it. Uh, Cad Zand is obviously going to top the market here. And I thought uh, if you took the, him in Soaring Glory, I'd prefer him and uh, Skeleton Horse. Um, uh, he obviously did it nicely at Canton the last day. And of course, he beat Christopher Wood, went up to Muzzleburg and won very well up there. So you can make a strong case that he's going to be well treated off a mark of 104, even though that's 11 pounds higher. Um, but look, it's the better hurdle. It's, uh, it's going to be 24 runners. You'd think there's uh, 28 in there now, and um, it's going to be frantic and it's going to be mad. I think you can take two at big prices, and the two I've found uh, is Gar- one's Guard Your Dreams uh, for the Twist and Davies. Uh, he's only had four starts over hurdles, but the Twist and Davies have a good good record in this race. Um, he, he's a, he's got an entry into Supreme. He fits that sort of profile for the bet for hurdle, like a five-year-old with a supreme hurdle entry, uh, supreme novice hurdle entry, and he's won his last two. Now, I mentioned friend or, friend or foe earlier on in, in the podcast, he goes into Kingwell. So I think uh, if you, you watch his run in the Kingwell, it would be a, a good guide to how well Guard Your Dreams runs uh, here because Guard Your Dreams beat him at Sandown, albeit getting quite a lot of weight off him. But the two of them pulled 19 lengths clear of a, a good horse in Mincier Lecoq. And uh, the pinking was further down the field that day. And just a line through him, he's run quite well in a lot of big handicap hurdles this season. And he was well beaten there by um, by both Guard Your Dreams and Friend or Foe. So I thought around 14th, he was uh, one you should get inside. And the other one um, is Mac the Man for Evan Williams and Adam Wedge. Like a real big fan of uh, both Evan Williams and, and Adam Wedge, obviously ha- having a really big season for the Rockers as well. And uh, Mac the Man, uh, I went back and watched this race last season. He was brought down at the last by Lightly Squeeze. And I'm pretty sure he wasn't done with it. He was just staying on. He was just beside Pick Dory at the time. And uh, he got brought down. Uh, he came into the race off really, really strong form. Earlier in the season, he'd beaten Lightly Squeeze. And Lightly Squeeze went on to win three of his four starts. And then, then he went to Sandown um, for that listed handicap hurdle. And he beat Protectorat and Song for Someone. So that was really strong form. Both of those went on and won you know, significant races later in the season. So, look, it, this season hasn't really gone to plan. He went over fences. He was beaten, well beaten twice, but he came back over hurdles the last day and won it in Canton. I'm pretty sure it was all just about getting a bit of confidence into him. It's only a four-runner race, but he managed to get it done only by, you know, length. It's a bit annoying that because he won that race, he gets a five-pound penalty for this, but he hasn't actually gone up five pounds in his official rating, so he's actually three pounds wrong in his rating. But, um... I, I I think he can run well given that he ran he was going to run really well here last season off 130 and he's only two pounds higher now so he was around 20 to one you could probably get bigger probably bigger price on the day and um, but those two are the ones for me Mac the man and guard your dreams now it'd be rude not to mention Navin on Sunday but before we wrap up bet for hurdle because there was a lot of horses mentioned there by all of us one selection each Mike Vince I'm going soaring glory what about yourself yeah, I mean, I've had the burglars here. Just hang on a minute while I make a phone call. 
um because you've nicked it from right under me I would go uh, very wide left here, but again, we're, we're flying slightly in the dark as to what gets in and what doesn't get in. And I will chance here um, the horse of um, I'm just changing <laughs> my mind again. You know, I've literally I'm, I'm humming an arm. He's, he's lost for words for once. Well, no, I've I think never heard my glory. I just, I'm so stunned that, that um I am absolutely stunned that he's taken the, the words very out of my mouth. I will chance a horse called For Pleasure each way at a big price, uh, although I have a great deal of respect for Soaring Glory because I like the way the horse won at Cheltenham in November. Uh, and hopefully it's my pleasure and uh, Barry Doyle's pain. Tell us, Kyle, one, two words, if it's, if it's only two words as a horse. What's, what's, the, what's the horse you're going with in the end? Wild, wild Max. Runner Groom. I, can I not have two? Because I mine are mine's fourteen to one and twenty to one. Barry, come on! I'm not putting up five to one shots in a champion hurdle or in a Becker hurdle like you. I'll give you a two. Fine. Guard your dreams and Mac the man. Okay, that's five horses for the Betfair hurdle. Hopefully, we've got the winner in there, lads. And lads, naps and MBs of the weekend. <clears throat> Mike Vince will kick off for the winner, as they say. I can't have soaring glory because I can't have you with the hump for the next week. It's more than my life. Mike, for you have enough people with the hump glory around me at the moment, the mother in law, without anybody else getting the hump. So if I can't <laughs> have soaring glory, here's a couple for tomorrow, uh, on Saturday rather. Haydock in the 350, going to nap that Venetia Williams horse, Farron's way. I sat down here expecting the next best dip, but now I've had my best one burgled. That's going to have to do. And each way uh, next best, a sporting each way bet, um, because I hope that somebody's actually going to sort the eight points challenge out from last week, but that's another story. Uh, 358 Wincanton, uh, David Pipe's first Lord de Couette has been suffering from a chronic attack of placed itis, uh, which we've all had in recent weeks. It might just have been found a soft opportunity. And uh, every, I think of First Lord, I think of the Sea Lord. It'll be a good day to be a Sea Lord because it'll be very squelchy. So those are my two. And I've let you have soaring glory. Aren't I a wonderful human being? <laughs> Ronan <Rolling> Groom. <laughs> Nap and MB. Uh, Nap, uh, race we didn't mention at Gorham Park. Uh, the Red Mills trial hurdle. Uh, Petit Mouchoir gets in here off uh, 11 stone two. So he's going to get loads away off uh, Jason the Militant and Course of Lime. Uh, he's been playing his trade at a higher level for a long time now, Petty Mouchoir. He blew out of Christmas, which is most unlike him. But um, I think he's get he's, all the conditions are in his favour today and he might even get a soft lead from the front. So Petty Mouchoir will do for me. And then uh, MB, I'll go with Fanyan Desterval in uh, the game spirit. I think 8-1 to one is, is a very generous price for him. Progressive horse. Lovely. Thomas Coyle was trying to figure out who he had left. Thomas Coyle, not yeah. on the weekend. I'm going to go to Gorham Park as well for my nap, but it's um, it's actually the beginner's chase I'm going for. Um, a horse called Cedarwood Road of Garoda Lachlan. Um, he chased home the big getaway at Leperstown the last day. Um, his first chase run didn't go to plan. He didn't jump well in Nice and finished seventh. But if you go back to his hurdle form, he beat Beacon Edge in the novice hurdle in Navin. Um, he is a class horse. He won, in Le he won his maiden hurdle around Leprechaun at Christmas la 12 months ago. Um, he's a good horse. Um, Derek O'Connor has taken the ride. I'm sure Derek hasn't got many of his 21 rides left. Um, against the professionals, so to be picking him, um, look, he could be a horse that could be a very good horse in time. So he's my nap. And... Um, my MB, I'm going to go with Wild Max each way in the bet for a hurdle. So. Lovely. That's it. Well, I'll be going for the nap in the bet for a hurdle as well. 3.35 at Newbury, soaring glory. I think this has been the plan for a long, long time. And I would not be surprised if he shapes up into a grade one novice uh, before the season is out. Um, 133. Off a mark of 133, again, he's, he'll handle the conditions and... Uh, right down the bottom of the weights uh, for John Joe O'Neill, 
Junior and John Joe O'Neill. So yeah, that's my nap in the, the big one on Sunday, 3.35 at Newbury. Yeah, next best for me, Dashiell Drasher. Fascinated to see how he gets on back up up in grade, uh, grade one now this time, uh, having won a graduation chase and over course and distance in a handicap last time for Jer- Jeremy Scott. Uh, there's only five runners in here. There will be plenty of pace, but uh, I'll take on surname uh, after his run to King George. Uh, Dashiell Drasher will do for me at 11 to 2. And uh, yeah, hopefully he'll do the business for me next best. Now, that concludes episode number 16 of the season. Um, let us know your naps and bees below and if you haven't subscribed to the channel make sure to do so and all feedback of course appreciated um, lads we'll be back for episode number 17 next week and Mike Vince is still with the Stewart CA points to play on Saturday don't forget check that out, blog out on Saturday mornings Mike Vince any comments my lips are sealed <laughs>